I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 3, and let's focus on verses 1 and 2. Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. You know, God is not arbitrary. What do I mean? Well, hey, that's comforting news, by the way, because it says that we can trust the character of God. He's not whimsical. He doesn't just do things and not think about them. God is ever-present. He is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. And so when God decides to do something, we don't have to ask if he has seen it from all angles, if he understands the ramifications of his decision, or if he has the power to finish what he's starting, or whether he has the right motives. And Solomon is building God's temple in Jerusalem on the exact spot where the Lord told David that he wanted the temple to stand on Mount Moriah. But when we hear of that location, Mount Moriah, doesn't it call us back to an earlier time? Genesis 22, verses 1 through 3. And now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and then he arose and he went to the place of which God had told him. So because of what we already know about God, that he's not arbitrary, we understand how he had planned for the exact spot where Solomon would build the temple is the place where he had led Abraham to offer up his son Isaac. The mountain where a ram was provided as a substitute for Isaac was the same mountain where the Lamb of God would be the substitute for our sin. Was this a coincidence? Hardly. At the end of today's chapter, we learn of standalone pillars. There's two of them. And that Solomon had erected them, and he gave them names. Now, these pillars did not support any structure, so they acted as standalone statements. Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 17 says this, And then he set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and one other on the left. And he called the, on the name of the Lord, on the right hand, he called it Jashin, and the name of the one on the left is Boaz. Now, Jachim uh, is, means Yah is one, or Yah establishes, and Boaz means strength. So what is the intended statement of these two pillars? Well, it's simple. As long as the king and Israel seek the Lord and him alone, then he will establish them by his strength. Have you committed to follow the Lord through a personal relationship with Jesus, forsaking all else in order to heed His calling on your life? And then He will establish you, if you have, in the strength of His Spirit. So let's keep reading the Bible, and let's keep seeing how well Solomon and Israel heed God's Word. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. You know, your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? Because we need your monthly support now more than ever. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. You know, another way to help is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. You can share these podcasts with your friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com.